Okay, apparently Supernatural Life was offended by my rage video. And uh, I'm not above correction. So if I'm wrong, just let me know what my error is. Now, before I get into that, uh, I just want to address this guy here, Plain of Norway, ruled by 144,000 from the tribes of Israel, yet Israel reject Jesus. Where is the logic in this? Yeah, so it's it's kind of odd, isn't it? We have uh, the 1948 created Israel, and they, they're a Jewish state, if you will. And that's supposed to be the birthplace of baby Jesus, yet they all reject Jesus. Now, it is odd, but ruled by 144,000, I'm not sure where you're getting that at. Um, perhaps you could elaborate for me, because I don't understand. Uh, for one thing, that's not in Revelation 7. Oops. Here. Uh, the word, I had to search for the word rule, <clears throat> right? And uh, it's not in 7. In, the, in Revelation, every time it's mentioned, it's talking about Jesus. So I'm not sure where you're getting this idea that 144,000 rule uh, anything. I'm not sure what you're talking about there. So maybe you could elaborate for me. But let me read Supernatural Life's comments here. I was in the process of making video about how you made me think. I think it's always important to pray and wait a long time before you go to make a video about somebody. It's too bad. I would have loved to had have had a conversation with you because I really enjoyed our conversation. I was looking for your channel to see if I could learn something from you. I don't know what more to say you, but this was very disappointing. Okay, so I'm not sure what I said that you took offense to is all I can say. I thought I was pretty nice. Um, as nice as I could, I, I wanted to show you the error in believing that you can lose your salvation. If you could lose your salvation, if I could lose it, I would. I'm the biggest dummy on the planet, right? So I, if I could screw it up, I would. There's no question about it. You look at Adam and Eve. They had it, they had it perfect, and they screwed it up. You look at the people before the flood. They lived hundreds of years old. And Adam was 930 years old. Those people had everything that they could ever ask for, and they screwed it up. And so you see, God was gathered his people into nations, and they screwed it up. Time and time and time again, people always fall in short, and that's because we all fall short, right? Nobody's perfect, so we all screw it up. If we could screw it up, we would screw it up, but we can't screw it up. Jesus, he's perfect. He is God in the flesh. He is uh, our Savior. And if we put our trust in his works, we know that he'll never screw it up. So we can be sure that we have eternal security. Right? And you know, like in Isaiah, it says Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And this was prophesied long before baby Jesus. Oh, excuse me. So long before baby Jesus, uh, Isaiah 9, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. So Jesus is the prince of peace. Now, how can you have peace in your life knowing that you could screw it up and lose your salvation? You can't have peace that way. Now, the question would become, are you bound to the law? No, we're not bound to the law. The law was there to bring us to faith in Jesus. Once we, are, once we have faith in Jesus, we are no longer under the law, but rather we're under the grace of God. All right, so 
uh, it's, we should be comfortable. We should be confident, right? Like I, I think I pointed that verse out, being confident that he which has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. All right, so we ought to be comfortable or uh, confident, excuse me, uh, confident in our eternal security. All right, we're not going to screw it. Now, I want to tell you a story here. I'm not sure. I'm just, I've never really told this story before. Okay, so back, <clears throat> excuse me, back in, uh, it must have been 2010, 11 or so. It was a couple years after, maybe a year after my mom died. Okay, so uh, I had an uncle who had a, a stroke. And I went to go see him a, a number of times after he had a stroke. And the first time I, I went to see him, you know, I, I go to his house and he says, hi, you know, and everything. And he seems like his old self. But then he asked me how my mom's doing. And, you know, my heart's already torn about losing my mom anyway. And I, I explained to him, you know, I figured he had a stroke. He maybe he forgot or something. I explained to him, you know, mom passed away. You know, it's hard to do. It's hard to tell somebody, you know, mom died. Uh, so I explained it to him and then uh, went about my way. And then, you know, a week later or whatever, I come back and I see him again. And again, he asked me how my mom's doing. And, and you know, I figured, oh, no, he doesn't. He doesn't recall nothing. Uh, so I, I just told him yeah, mom's doing good. Mom's doing fine. You know, um, because at this point, uh, his son, my cousin had already told me stories about how he would be uh, calling up the dealerships and stuff and, or calling up, not the dealerships, but the prison where she worked at and, asking where's my wife and he was having a fit throwing a fit wondering where his wife was well his wife passed away two years before my mom they were sisters so in his head his wife was still alive so he didn't he couldn't find his wife and so he was because of the stroke he was stuck in this time period before his wife and his sister-in-law passed away and so I, and this was, you know, every time I go over there, he asked me how my mom was doing. So every time I go over there, I tell him, mom's doing great. She's doing fine, you know. But uh, so the point is that this was before his mindset is before. Now, what if, think about this. What if you got saved and then had a stroke and then your mindset went back to before you were saved. And so all your thoughts were about sin. All your thoughts were against God. You know, you didn't have any faith in God whatsoever because that's your mindset before you were saved. The stroke did something to you. Let, I, You know, it did something to my uncle. And, it, you know, it's just, it's kind of crazy, but that's, you know, I guess that's life, right? But the point is, you know, what if... What if that happened to you and your mind was taken back to a time before you were saved? Does that mean you're going to lose your salvation? Not at all. You shouldn't have to worry whatsoever because what Jesus did was once for all. He died on the cross to cover your sins once for all. So you can't say that if you sin, you lose your salvation because Jesus died for your sin once for for all okay and so you can't even say that if you lose faith you lose your salvation because Jesus Christ is in you as I pointed out in that other video he's in you and he cannot deny himself so let's say you had a stroke you go back to the mindset of uh, not believing in Jesus Jesus Christ is still in you and he cannot deny himself okay let's say you're on the deathbed or in a coma for five years. Jesus Christ is still in you. You can't, he can't die. So because he can't die, you will never die. I hope that makes sense.